Hello, and thanks for joining. Um, Today we're going to talk about one of the things that really distinguishes a next-generation firewall from all other types of security solutions out there. And it's one of the things that is an example of how a true next-generation firewall really differs from any of the preceding uh, port-based network security controls that have come before it and why the invention of app id why something that is truly new in a next generation firewall is required so what are we talking about when we say circumventers there are a lot of tools out there that end users in our networks as well as hackers know uh, to use that can get by traditional port based controls whether they're firewalls or ips systems or whatever it is Um, This is something where you see a lot of kind of variation between things that are really commonly used by end users. Some of these even have business value. And then there's some things that are pretty purposeful about avoiding security and don't really have a whole lot of business value whatsoever. Um, Remote desktop, probably one of the top uh, offenders out there in the world where Even in grade school, um, there are websites to teach school kids how to use remote desktop, talk back to their uh, uh, PC at home to surf Facebook or whatever they're trying to get to that might be blocked by the URL filtering at their school. You also see a lot of uh, actual people at work in the office remote desktop to home to get uh, access to their music collection or whatever it is that they uh, they want to be able to use uh, from home. So this is something that's very common. Um, there's also business uses for it. Um, obviously, anyone um, that's supporting uh, systems may need to remote desktop or even use SSH or something like that to uh, uh, connect and manage a system. So this is something that you're going to see in networks quite a bit. Um, proxies run the entire gamut. Um, Proxies are obviously one of the pieces of infrastructure that a lot of enterprises themselves will use to protect their infrastructure. Um, It is also a favorite for end users trying to get around the firewall because they can proxy out to another location and then be able to have all of that traffic avoid inspection. On the darkest end of the scale there, um, proxies are one of the fundamental components that malware writers build into their uh, their malware creations. Um, a proxy is going to allow that malware to reach out to the world um, and communicate without it being inspected uh, for that same purpose that an end user would. Um, so this is something that we need to understand is going to be in our environments, but we need to know how to securely enable this technology so that it doesn't just create kind of a Swiss cheese effect in terms of our security. You also see a lot of custom encryption. Sometimes you'll see uh, applications or something that is proprietary in the enterprise use its own type of encryption. But you also see this quite a bit on the hacker side where uh, bots and various things like that may use their own types of encryption, again, to make sure that uh, security solutions can't inspect the payload. And then the end of the, uh, the spectrum out here are the purpose-built encrypted tunnels. These are your ultra-surf applications, your hamachis, things that are really built with the sole purpose of getting a user across a network security device. And these are applications that if you see them in your network, it's almost always a bad thing to uh, outsmart your uh, security solutions. So Ultrasurf is probably a good one to take a look at because this is uh, one of the most difficult circumventers to really kind of stay on top of. It uses a lot of techniques. It was purpose built to avoid firewalls and IPS. Um, it has many of the it uses many of the techniques that we've talked about before. It uses all types of ports. It will evade to an unused port if it gets detected. It proxies its traffic to the outside world, and it also uses proprietary encryption. So it's using a lot of those individual techniques we were seeing earlier. The other very tricky part is that it requires a diligent research organization to stay on top of Ultrasurf. It is constantly changing. Um, And this is something that we 
constantly track these types of applications. And over the past three years, just as an example, we have had 27 separate updates um, to stay on top of UltraSurf. Um, these are the types of applications that know how to get past a traditional uh, approach to security. And if we don't have these types of things uh, uh, under control, then all of our best efforts, all of our uh, controls that we have at the perimeter and beyond are going to be easy for an end user or a hacker to drive past. So how do we fix this? Um, we need to block those worst of the worst applications, block those things like UltraSurf and Hamachi and Tor, um, all of those things that can just create tunnels into our environment with no value. Then for the rest of those applications that we need, we need to securely enable them. That means to block certain features that we don't want used. For example, in our web meeting applications, we may want to block the, the, the ability to share the desktop. Um, we can control this based on user. So for the IT guys that need remote desktop, we can allow it for them, but not for just rank and file employees. Um, we want to limit the use of proxies to the ones that are uh, supported by the enterprise. If someone is using a custom HTTP proxy or something that's trying to get across the firewall, we want to be able to identify and stop those types of things. So let's actually see what this looks like in a real world view of a Palo Alto Networks policy. So here we are inside the uh, policy tab of the Palo Alto Networks interface. And this is where we can set lots of rules for things like how do we deal with encrypted tunnels, what users we want to apply those rules to, and then what types of threat prevention. But what I want to do here is really kind of dig in and just show you how uh, easy it is to create uh, policies that understand um, exactly these types of applications. So what I've done now is I've opened an application filter. And this subcategory section allows us to really focus on what types of applications we want to control. Just by clicking on the encrypted tunnel subcategory, we see lots of things like GBridge. This is definitely something that we want to be able to control. Um, we can see Hamachi, uh, which we had been talking about earlier. So it's really easy to create groups of these very evasive, potentially dangerous applications. Um, and then we can also, maybe we use Cisco VPN, not quite as, as threatening, so we could pull that out of the policy as needed. Scrolling down a little bit more, we can also see um, what types of proxies we want to allow. And now I still have the encrypted tunnels selected, so I can build this dynamic list of proxies that we want to include or not include, um, and then our remote ac access technologies. So this makes it really easy to build things just on the type of application. And then over here, we can also filter based on we just want to protect against the most high risk threats out there. So maybe your um, kind of uh, level four and five risk that you may want to control. Um, the applications that can tunnel other applications, applications that are being used by malware. So this is how you really quickly and succinctly build policies that understand exactly what these applications are, what they can do, what types of risk they bring into the environment so that we can really start to control those applications. And with that list built, we can always, of course, apply it to different groups of users, di different individual users. So we can have a policy that forbids all of these kind of more dangerous applications and then create exceptions for our IT staff that need to use some of these tools to do their jobs. So this is one of those really, really important concepts, one of the most fundamental things that a next generation firewall should do and something that you would really have to have truly new technology. You have to have a new classification engine, a new way of understanding traffic that's not based on port, because if you don't, all of these types of applications are going to be able to outsmart your controls. 
So with that, we'll wrap up and we look forward to seeing you on one of the future videos. Thanks a lot.